YouTube. Today's the day. We're finally doing the Yamaha Phaser Converted Kit Fox 4 video. I believe it's the world's first Yamaha Phaser powered Kit Fox. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is a Kit Fox 4 1050 Vax Gross. Uh, that's the main reason why it has a phaser instead of an apex. I didn't have the weight to put a apex in here. And I'm the phaser guy, so I like phasers, and I thought it would be an upgrade from the 582 it had. The phaser is actually a perfect replacement for uh, Rotex 582s. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but let's take a look at the plane. I'll show you the install, and then we'll go fly. So this is the plane. This is, a, like I said, a Kit Fox 4 1050. I own this with uh, two other friends of mine. And over the summer, we slowly installed a Yamaha phaser engine into this airframe and it has been working pretty good um, just got to the point where I'm flying it a lot I've been flying the the Yamaha Kolb that you can find in my other videos that I already put a phaser in before but this is the next big thing and I'm using um, a Rotex C-Box and one of my Rotex C-Box adapters that you can find on my website. It's bkexperimental.com um, So it does work. It does work in the Kit Fox 4 uh, Obviously we had make custom custom engine mount that I'll show you in a little bit And I have the, the gearbox in the down position, which is not what I thought we were gonna end up doing I thought we were gonna have it in the up position uh, But there's a reason for that and there's more than one way to do things So we'll talk about that in a minute when I take the top cowl off and show you the engine um, this uh, <laughs> this uh, Nose cone or this prop cone. I made this I 3d printed this It's just sitting on there for the video so I could show it to you guys, but the stock one Let me show you the one that came with this prop. I Think it's just a coffee cup isn't this just a coffee cup mug top or something that someone drilled a hole in? I mean, I thought that looked kind of goofy. I was like, ah, we can do better than that. So I 3D printed one, but haven't really tested the 3D printed one. I don't want to just blast off and have it disintegrate or something. So haven't flown with it yet, but it's going to be on there for the video. Just so you don't have to look at that uh, weird prop flange. So I've been flying this plane for a few years now, and it's had a Rotex 582, which is 65 horsepower. Um, a lot of the Kit Fox 1050s and then the Kit Fox 2s and 3s, a lot of them had 582s for power plants. And it did pretty good. Um, it, it burned like 5 gallons an hour. Our realistic cruise was like 75 miles an hour. Um, it was okay, you know, and I'm really just doing bush plane stuff with this locally I'm not really trying to go across the country or anything So it was good enough until I learned about the phasers put the phasers in the cold and I was like, hey, you know I think we could put one in the kit box because It worked really good in the cold. So why not do it in the kit box and um, sold the 582 used that money to buy a sled and Here we are after a bunch of hard work. It's done um, had to do a lot of things to make it work, but it does work. Start out with the muffler I got. This muffler is a 2007-2008 uh, Yamaha R1 muffler. It's pretty loud. Um, it's louder than I want, and plus it's emptying like right underneath your butt, which is not really ideal. I could put like a downspout on it or something. It's not like, I want to say it's louder than the 582, but uh, compared to my Kolb, with the, the crossplane R1 muffler. Man, that thing is super quiet. All you hear is the prop. So probably gonna change that, but it works for now. We got um, our fuel pumps back there, as you can see. Got a fuel pump switch up here. Um, the, I changed the panel. So this is the display from the snowmobile. And so that's what we're using for the main engine monitoring. And of course I have my airspeed thing on there. So the airspeed shows up on the snowmobile speedo, which is pretty cool. Uh, I have an oil temp gauge. Other than that, I'm using um, all the dummy lights and everything on the stock cluster. Now the stock cluster does give you a lot more information than people think. You just have to go into the sub menus to view them, uh, which isn't really like practical, but for testing it's fine. And the dummy lights do their job and let you know if there's a problem, just like any other gauge would. So other than that, I took a few things out of the panel that were not needed anymore from the 582. So that was pretty easy. Okay, so here I took the uh, top cowl off so you can see a little bit more what's going on here. 
Um, made the exhaust, of course, put a flex joint in it, runs down to the muffler down there. The engine mount we made was working out really good. Hasn't fallen off yet, so that's a plus, right? It's a one-off deal we made. Um, have the oil tank in the front because there's no room to put it in the back. And the reason for that is with using the C-Box and trying to utilize the stock cowl, we had to get the engine back as far as possible. And to do that, um, there's the foot wells that kick out of the, the firewall. So it had to be at the same level as the 582. This is 3D printed, this manifold I made. Uh, these are the stock rubber intake boots from um, the intake on the snowmobile. So I made this 3D printed flange that these pop into and then made this manifold that goes to a filter, have that secured nice and steady. It is barely clears the cowl. The whole mission of all this was to fit under the stock cowl. Man, that was a challenge. Um, getting the engine position in the same place as the 582. To use a stock cowl, we had to put your engine back as far as we could and get it on top of these um, these kickouts for the foot well. So a lot of guys are putting the like the apexes and stuff further out and that's fine but we were trying to use a stock cowl and with my uh, gearbox set up where it sticks out the prop flange a little bit more you know this is the way to make this work now there's different ways you can do it and if you're willing to do some cowl work you could do it a different way but compared to putting this on my pusher kolb you know where you're dealing with trying to fit it inside a cowl there's a lot more to think about so it's a little more difficult of an install and there i got the uh a wire harness pass through that i 3d printed even have a ECU holder that I 3D printed. You can see right there, ECU just kind of slips in there, make it nice and tidy. Um, the rest of the wiring tucks up nice in between the, in behind the panel. No issues there. Voltage regulator. Now the oil tank is about as low as you can possibly get away with. Um, we put it where it fit. Ideally, I'd like to have it a little bit higher like I have in my phaser Kolb, but this has been running fine. No problems with oil pressure or anything. Um, so, you know, as far as the oil tank, that's about as low as I would put it in relation to the engine. So getting the phaser to fit in the stock cowling was the main challenge. I uh, was trying to avoid modifying the cowl, and I was like, if we can make it fit, why not do it that way? So that's what we did. It's a little different than some people would probably do it, but this has been working out good. Uh, had the clearance to cowl a little bit, but didn't have to do any major alterations to it. Um, honestly, I would prefer to have a uh, Kit Fox 1200 and put an Apex in it. That's more my style, but this is what I have, so this is what I did and uh, down the road, probably do another project like that. Um, but it's fun to use this plane as like a test bed and also improve it and have some fun with it. So if you guys are interested in the Yamaha phaser swaps, please go into my channel, click on my videos and look at the my older videos because I have a bunch of information, way more detailed than I'm just skimming over right now when I put the, this engine on a Kolb. Um, which a lot of the stuff applies. It's a different plane, but you get the idea and I, I keep getting the same questions over and over and it, <laughs> It's tough being uh, the only guy out there flying a phaser because everyone wants to ask you the same questions and I don't mind answering them But I mean it's there's so many projects going on. I'm really excited for more guys to have phasers flying in different aircraft so we can work together to figure out you know the best prop and the best gear ratio and the gearboxes and uh you know exhaust and all that but i'm happy to be one of the the first people doing it and i'm having a lot of fun so i hope that we can all work together to uh improve these setups and make them more practical for more people all right so it's pretty crappy out today it's <laughs> barely good enough to fly i think it's 1100 foot ceiling so I'm going to at least do some pattern flights here at the minimum, get some flying in and we can see the takeoff distance and um, some climb rates, stuff like that. I got my GoPro with my, uh, my microphone set up. So we'll play around with that and hopefully it's good enough to uh, do some pattern flights. So you can see it's pretty gloomy today, but this was the day I had to do it. So let's just get it done. 
Clear it. 